Hello everyone, I'm Dennis Hodges and I'm really happy to have this opportunity that the Vernon Philly Art Museum allowed me to share some ideas and thoughts about my work. The first question that was asked me was, who inspired you throughout your career? I draw from a number of artistic sources. I'm not limited to just photography. I draw from art, with painting from Mark Rothko, from sculpture from people like Louise Nevelson and Alexander Calder, from music, Beethoven, who combined symphony and a chorus together. The underlying thread with all these artists is that they did something no one else had done before. They've tried new things and pushed limits. They kind of see the world in a new light. I even draw from people like Gary Larson, you know, who wrote the um, um, Farside cartoon. You know, he did some great things in there. I also enjoy street artists such as uh, Banksy and Shepard Fairey because they, they're the canvas they've chosen, the messages they share and how they their juxtaposition of certain objects in their work. So I, I draw inspiration really from every aspect of art that's out there. What's a theme you find central to your work? There's two themes I've kind of migrated towards. It's been, it's been an evolutionary process and it'll continue to evolve throughout my life. But currently I'm kind of focused around two areas. One is a sense of place, what defines place or sense of home. And the other deals with politics. I never saw myself as much of a politician type person or some really politically involved, but my work has kind of evolved that direction with some of the political themes I see popping up um, in my life. And so it's, it's reflected in my work as a result. What countries have you traveled to and where was your favorite place to exhibit? Um, I'm just north of 50 countries so far in my travels. And there's a lot more to come. Um, that's my goal. So I, a lot of countries I've been to, I've got some deficits in certain pockets of the world, but continue to grow. You know, I love, love to travel to a new country every chance I get. I've had some pretty cool exhibits. You know, one was in, uh, my last one was in China and it was a great opportunity to go to China. Never been there before but also a chance to interact with Chinese artists and photographers and share ideas on work and exhibit there was, was quite an honor. But I've also had exhibits as, as unusual as the back windows of city buses in Guatemala. And I love that because it was taking these eyes from the politicians off posters from the streets, taking it back to the streets in Guatemala. So my exhibits, it's where I like to exhibit. I like to see my work shown in different ways and try to connect with people in a different level. It's a lot of fun for me. How do you get out of a creative rut? Um, I mentioned some inspiration I get from other artists and a way to break out of a creative rut is to take in other artists' work. I love to look at other work, not just photography, outside of photography as well. I mentioned sculpture, I mentioned music, I mentioned, I didn't mention about dance, but dance is there, literature, different ways to draw inspiration. It helps me grow in my work. And so to break out of a creative rut is stepping away from my work sometimes and doing something totally different. Even just taking a walk is a great way to do that because it helps with divergent thinking, helps you solve problems in a different way. So that's usually my solution for, for breaking out of a creative rut. Do I spend a lot of time trying to perfect a photo or do I just free myself and let it flow? It's a combination of both actually. With my series, I'm very deliberate about what I'm trying to shoot, what I'm trying to capture. So I'm looking for that specific image. I'll shoot a lot of pictures to and then, and then um, edit it down to the ones that really make sense. But so I'm very specific about the pictures. On the other hand, I'm taking pictures all the time of just things I see, things that I enjoy. So that's being cutting myself loose in that respect. On a more structured basis, I try to compose everything in camera. So when I frame an image, I want that to be the final picture, if at all possible. It doesn't always happen. Sometimes I need to make it some cropping, some adjustments, some alignment issues. But I try to do everything in camera, just challenge for myself, really. On a post-production basis, I'll do some editing, but I, I try to limit the amount of work I do in Photoshop to just cleaning things up a little bit. I'm not opposed to manipulated images. Some look amazing, just not how I do my work. Um, the only thing I do is sometimes really, really get down to the pixel level to retouch if something's really bothering me in an image. So it's kind of a mix of structured and unstructured in how I view my work. What's my new series, You Are Not Here About? This is kind of complex. So we live in a virtual world. I mean, here I am talking to you on a video instead of talking to you live in person because of constraints we have right now that we're under. But at the same time, we've moved to a virtual world anyway. On social media, we have friends on Facebook who 
probably wouldn't be our friends in real life if we were to meet with them and so forth, but they're friends of ours, or so we call them that. We do the same thing in terms of liking things. We like pages, we like events, we like things that we see, even if we've never been to that restaurant or done that, been to that event before. So it's very superficial relationships. We also choose what side of our lives we share with others on Facebook, for example. I'll share an image. It's the image I want you to see. You don't get to choose what you see of my life. I choose what you get to see. So it's very shielded and very, very separated from reality. Photography itself is an abstraction. Look, I'm sitting here. I can turn around 360 degrees. I have five senses that are engaged right here at the moment. You're limited to really two senses. You can hear me, you can see me, but only what's in the frame. Well, photograph does the same thing. It crops everything, everything else out down to a two-dimensional static image. So this series is a combination of all these things coming together. And so in the series, what I do is I'm taking you to a location where I have been and I'm showing you exactly what I saw in that photograph. In addition, I've done some ambient audio while I was there. And on top of that, I've tied in Google Maps and specifically Google Satellite, so I can take you to that exact spot. You can look at it on Google and see exactly where I was, but you're not there. So I'm taking you there, but you're not really there with me. Let me show you, it's better to see this perhaps live. So I'm gonna show you this QR code. So you wanna grab your camera and take a picture of the QR code and just scan it. It should take you straight to Google Maps and to Google Satellite to that exact location where the picture was taken. Now, as, as I'm gonna show you the photo here and the ambient sound that goes with it. So let's take a look at that real quick here. So in that image, what I've done is I took you there because I showed you the photograph, what I saw. You could hear what I heard. You can see it on a map. So you're there, but you're not really there. So you are here, but you're not really here. And that's what the series is about. What's your favorite piece you've created of all time? I don't think I've done that yet. Um, I believe in every work of art, part of the artist goes into that work, whether it's music, dance, photography, painting, whatever it is, part of the, you're projecting yourself and your personality in that artwork. I have a lot of pictures of mine I love dearly. Is there a favorite? It's really hard to pin down because they're all parts of me, all different aspects of my life. Maybe someday I'll have a favorite image, but right now at this point, I don't have a favorite specifically. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the opportunity and talk to you later.